Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be reviewing the Deepcool Matrix 30. This is the cheapest case in Deepcool's Matrix lineup, which includes the very popular Deepcool Matrix 55. Matrix 55 became a very popular choice because of its modern uh, design and cheap price point. So let's see, can this $35 case live up to its uh, older brother, the Ma Matrix 55? Or is it just too cheap to be possible? Let's find out right now. I don't have any sponsors, so it's actually right now. All right, so let's first start off with the design. So the thing that sets this apart from a lot of other cases is the fact that the design is much more modern than pretty much any other case. Most other cases look like they're from 2008 at this price range, um, but the Deep Pool Matrix 30 definitely um, takes a much better approach to design with a full tempered glass side panel and um, a very nice uh, front with some Nice grooves down the front and some mesh ventilation in, in the interior of the grooves. It's a very sleek uh, design and it fits very well with the case, making the case look very streamlined and modern despite its cheap price point. So yeah, the front ventilation works very well, uh, providing ample airflow to all of your components rather than having the crappy like under the case airflow or only a tiny bit of space around the sides. Uh, the fan can directly access the mesh and it goes right through into the case. Sadly, the hard drive cage is blocking half of the fan, but it's still ample uh, airflow for a budget case. Definitely, if you have budget hardware in there, it won't be a problem. Uh, so speaking of airflow, this also comes included with a single fan in the back. So you shouldn't have um, any problems with airflow. If you need to, you can move that to the front. Uh, especially, I would recommend that if you don't have any extra fans and you have a tower cooler, move the fan to the front. That will uh, because the tower cooler will basically act as an exhaust for the computer. But anyway, the plastic uh, on the front panel does feel, while well, very lightweight, and it does feel kind of cheap, um, does not look cheap, which is a very good thing for the design. It is a nice matte plastic. I really like how they didn't decide to go like glossy or brushed because those never look good on the cheap cases. Um, I mean, glossy never really looks good on anything. But you know, uh, I'm really glad that they didn't decide to do anything like that, uh, which really sets us apart from a lot of other cheap cases. Um, and you know, the design on the inside, well, um, is not really anything special. Uh, it doesn't have a PSU shroud, and you know, there's it's it's a pretty standard design. Uh, it's not the oldest design. Uh, it does have a 3.5 inch or 3.5 or five and a quarter inch bay in the front which um, for some people may be a good thing. Uh, for most people, it's a bad thing because you don't want to have that big, uh, you know, like taking the cage, taking up all the space. But what I really like um, is Deep Cool has, you know, made it very sleek, uh, well, sorry, very uh, low profile. So it's just a tiny bit on the front. So it barely takes up any space. Leaves you ample room for cable management and getting all of your hardware in. It doesn't really feel tight working in it as opposed to some other cheap, uh, cases that I've worked in, you know, you're able to really like get, get the motherboard in there easily, screw in everything out all easily. Um, so I do really like, um, you know, while the interior of the case is pretty much the same as a lot of other budget cases, it is definitely one of the more open designs as compared to some other cases, which is definitely gets a thumbs up for me. Um, so yeah, um, a few other things to note about the design, the tempered glass side panel, well, this isn't a huge uh, thing because of the price of the case. Uh, it doesn't have any edge edges, painted edges around the panel. So you can see the ugly like frame with all like the cutouts and stuff around it, which is not a good thing. But again, it's a $35 case. I think it's pretty good uh, for that. Um, none of the thumb screws are captive uh, and there's no like special like hinge or anything or like a lip at the bottom to hold on the tempered glass side panel. So you want to be careful, don't drop that and don't lose your thumb screws. So yeah, on the compatibility side of things, you can fit up to uh, three, uh, three and a half inch drives and two, two and a half inch drives in there along with, as I mentioned before, one five and a quarter inch drive if you want. Uh, the CPU clearance is 151 millimeters. So you can have a pretty, I mean, it's not the best for a tower cooler, but it does give you enough options to get a good tower cooler in there. Um, and the PCU clearance is 100 and 70 millimeters, although it looks more like 250. I mean, maybe I would say 200 and 210. I mean, there, I don't see anything in the way uh, of going longer. I did measure it, um, but you know, you may have run into some problems routing the cables because the PSU may block the cable routing hole. But as but it does look like you can 
fit longer than 170 millimeter power supply if you have something a little longer about than that don't worry about it and the uh, graphics card clearance is about 250 millimeters which you know is it's, it's all right for this case uh, my graphics card that i use my main system definitely wouldn't fit in here but that's definitely not a, something you would want to use in a budget build uh, the cooling support is a little lackluster for a budget case it's probably fine um, if you really need to do water cooling, you can support up to a 120 millimeter in the back with one fan, or I guess two fans, um, yeah, one on each side. There's nothing on the top, which is probably one of my complaints. I would like to have seen a single fan slot on the top, and in the front, I would have liked to see uh, two fan slots. There's room for two fan slots, especially because if you had two fan slots, you could have one all the way above the hard drive cage rather than like halfway. Um, I think that would definitely improve airflow a little bit, but uh, again, you know, it's all right. It's not not the best cooling support, but it, and it is a budget case. Um, so yeah, cable management in this case is pretty bad. Um, even with the bump out on the back of the panel of the case, there's still not a lot of room to run your cables, especially if you have like the thicker, you know, like bundled up cables. Um, if your cables come like flat black cables, you should be fine, but most uh, budget power supplies do have those like thick round cables, which does make it a little annoying to cable management, especially because uh, it's a smaller case, so you will definitely have extra cable length if you don't, well, yeah, you will definitely have a little bit of extra cable length or extra cables if you don't use a modular power supply, and I guess the only really good place to stick those in is the hard drive cage, which is not the best because you can still see it through the window. Um, but and there is one the most annoying thing about the cable management is there's no eps cable routing hole so you cannot you have to route it through like the cpu grommet or whatever it's or i guess behind the motherboard it's it's annoying there should be a cpu uh, cut out for the cpu power cable definitely that's definitely one of the really bad the, well not really bad that's definitely one of the downsides of this case the building experience in this case is all right you know it's what you'd expect from a budget case um you know, there's no sharp edges or anything. You probably, you won't cut yourself. And there's enough room to, you know, easily get things in and screw them down. Uh, the cable management, as I said, not great. Um, but, you know, on overall, it's all right. So one downside, uh, installing the IO shield is very tight. Um, on this case, as compared to some other cases, it's much more annoying to install. And one other annoying thing is on the back of the case, isn't really building experience, but it's really annoying. Uh, there's this lip that curls up over the top PCIe slot and it will block larger display cables from going in. You can fix this by slanting the graphics card down a little bit, like sagging it intentionally, but that's not a good thing. You don't really want to do that. Um, it's something that really annoys me. Um, I wish I would not design cases like this. Uh, that's definitely one thing. It is super annoying. It's not just annoying to work in. It's annoying to use if you have a thick display cable you, you can't plug it into your graphics card which is i think a really bad oversight by deep cool i think that they should um change this in you know future cases but one thing you know the worst part about this case and it's not even about the case it's just about deep cool what they've done they have not included a user manual there is no user manual you cannot find a user manual on their site in nowhere does it tell you which screws to use. Nowhere does it tell you how to install a hard drive. Nowhere does it tell you how to install the optical drive. Of course, some of these things you can watch a tutorial, but there's no tutorial on how to install a hard drive or you, what screws you need to use. Um, at the end of this video, if you want, I'll show you guys how to install a hard drive, uh, an optical drive, and what screws you need for what. Um, just to be helpful, because I know there's no resources out there, uh, so if you need to know, uh, if you're a beginner and you need to know how to do that, I will include that at the end. Um, but as I said, it's really annoying. Yes, so as I said, that uh, is definitely really annoying. Uh, I think that something that Deep Pool needs to fix, because, you know, it may save them a little bit of money, but, you know, paying an extra dollar for the case would definitely be worth it, in my opinion, for... Uh, well, maybe a lot of people, it may not be worth it because nobody wants to RTFM. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like, you know, there are some people out there who don't know what they're doing and need to read a user manual who can't, you know, just figure it out on their own because they've never really used a computer case and they don't really understand, oh, this little slot, oh, you might want to, like, screw, screw halfway in there and then you can, like, slide it in. and then It's like, 
you can't expect everyone to just like figure that out on their own. Like, you know, I don't, it, whatever, like it's, it's really bad. Um, this is the worst part about the case in my opinion. So definitely something that Deep Cool, they can still fix. Um, and you know, if they're watching this somehow, fix it, make a user manual, even if it's really simple and crappy, it's still better than nothing. I mean, take a little bit of time, make it like legible, but you know, <laughs> make a user manual, please, for the love of God. But yes, um, that's about all I have to say about this case. Uh, just recap, I think the visual design of the case is very nice. Um, and I think the design of the case overall is pretty good despite a couple things being the uh, IO shield and the little curl above the uh, little curl above the PCIe slot uh, being some oversights that I think should be a little fixed uh, in the next, you know, uh, Dequel's next cheap uh, like case, uh, budget ME TX case, I guess. Um, and you know, overall the worst thing, the manual not existing. Um, but you know, should you buy this case? I think that, you know, um, if you are willing to maybe figure a few things out on your own, I think, you know, besides the manual, I think it is definitely a good beginner case. You know, you're not going to cut yourself. It's, uh, it looks nice. I think it's something that would definitely be good to start out with. It's definitely good if you want a cheap case for flipping computers. Um, uh, so uh, overall, I would, I would recommend the case. Obviously there are a few flaws, but, um, as long as you, uh, don't mind those flaws, then I think this is a good case and I would definitely recommend it. So yeah, um, I guess I, I should outro this video now, even though, well, maybe not even though. I'm gonna outro this video now. Maybe I'll put it at the end, but uh, I will show you guys how to, like a little bit of what to do because there's no manual. But after that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And you know, if you liked it, please consider leaving your support uh, by leaving a like or maybe even subscribing. Um, it would be greatly appreciated and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. All right. So here we are, um, as you can see the case is right here. Um, so we're going to show you guys how to install a uh, optical drive, oops, <laughs> optical drive and a hard drive because these are not really, st I mean, I guess somewhat standard, but um, these ones you don't really know how to, you may not know how to install. Well, like you, you can't really use a normal tutorial to install because it's pretty, it's, it's different for each one. I also, um, what screws to use. Um, Essentially, well, I guess we'll start off with the screws to use. Um, pretty much everything in the case is standard. Uh, obviously, uh, motherboard screws, uh, I'm not, I mean, I guess most of the cases I've encountered use the, here. As you can see, it's the uh, case screw, here. Case screw with the little lip on it, the round one with the lip. Uh, so that one is used for screwing into the uh, motherboard tray right here. Um, because sometimes for the motherboard tray, you will get um, some of these screws instead. Um, focus, thank you. Uh, you'll get some of these, like the hexagon screws for the motherboard, but the, uh, the like round lipped ones are the ones that work. As you can see here, both of them together. The round ones have a slightly smaller uh, thread size, so. Uh, those are the ones you want to use. Those are also the ones you want to use for the hard drives and uh, optical drives. Um, all right, so let's start with how do we install the hard drive. So essentially, um, as you can see down here, right? So as you can see down here, it's a little dark, but as you can see, there are those little grooves and essentially you might be wondering what are those grooves for? How do I screw in a screw on that side? Those grooves essentially what you want to do, right? Is you want to, uh, you want to take a screw and you want to screw it into the hard drive before you put it in. Not all the way, not all the way, but you want to do, right? Zoom in. You see this screw? That's about how far you want to screw it in. So you can go over here. Sorry, it's a little hard to do this while also looking at the camera, making sure it's still in the focus range. So we can just screw it in most of the way, about to there. And then essentially okay, what we can do is, uh, let me just get, sorry, I accidentally unplugged my microphone there. 
uh, that, I, that was, <laughs> it was very loud. Uh, but hey, yeah, we're back. Uh, so uh, essentially now that we've got the screws put in part, part of the way, what you can do right here, as you can see, you put the, it's a little bit hard to get in. Uh, what you can do is, ah, okay. What you wanna make sure is that it's above the lip on this side right here. Uh, you can't really see that, it's too dark, but there's a little lip. You wanna make sure the drive is above that lip and then you can just slide the screw into the little hole. It's a little tricky to get in there. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. You slide it into the slot and keep on going until it goes in. There we go. Now we're good. And now what we do is, um, let me just put this down here. Eh, whatever. That's good enough. Um, we can take, where did I put the screw? Right, no, not that one. Here we go. We can take the screw right here. And then we can just screw in our freaking now. You can screw in, screw here. Obviously, if you haven't put in the power supply already, you can screw in multiple screws, but three screws is fine. It won't go anywhere. Don't worry about it. So yeah, we can screw in this third screw over here until it's all the way tight, and then boom, 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 boom. Hard drive installed. All right, so that's good. Now let's move on to the optical drive. Is first of all, we can just get this over here. Uh, we can take off the front panel from underneath. No, not from underneath, not today. Uh, you just eat it off like that. Uh, if you wanted to know how to take off the front panel, that's how you take off the front panel. Um, of course. So then right here, as you can see in here, we've got these tabs. You just want to push in on the tab, yeet it through, and then it will come out. Okay? So that's how you take that out. And then uh, what you do, I'll just put it in the top one because this other one is blocked by a... Uh, can you put it in the top one? I think you can. Oh, look. There's two slots um, for drive bays, although the, the top one won't actually work. So you have like uh, multiple settings. You can see here. Can you guys see? Oh, sorry, it's not focused. Um, but as you can see, there's a screw here, screw here, and screw here. So essentially, here, what we can do is uh, maybe sweat, all right. What we can do, right, is uh, so this is the front one. This will be slightly in front of the case. The middle one will be like right there in the case. And then the last one will be like inside the case. So if you wanted to put something in the top, you would have to put it in the last one and you wouldn't be able to access it from the front. So it's not a drive bay, but I'm not so sure. You could get like a hard drive adapter for up there if you wanted to add more hard drives. But essentially, right, you just slide it in here and then you just line up the screw. You screw in one screw, only one screw on this side. You can screw, I mean, I guess two screws. You can screw one here, one here. And then on the back side, we just turn the case around. Um, you can screw in two more and then two more here. So yeah, that's how you install an optical drive. Sorry, I couldn't demonstrate it exactly for you guys, but that is how you do it in this case. Uh, hopefully um, that helps you guys out if you're building a PC in this case, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, uh, all right, see you guys.